Hello there, Mark Sabatella from Outside Shore Music here. In this video, I want to talk about uh, the way in which we can change the octave of notes when orchestrating a score, for instance, this is a score for piano here, how we can change the octave while more or less preserving the meaning if we just pay attention to two important concepts. Well, really, one important concept, and that is the outer voices. I want to keep the relationship between the outer voices the same. What do I mean by this? Well, let's take a look at this little passage right here. You see that I have D and then F and then G in my melody there. That's the melody, and what I will say is it's okay to change the octaves of things as long as that melody remains on top. If I take the melody and keep it on top, it's going to still work. So in my orchestration here, I actually have the flute playing that melody an octave above. And that's okay. It's, it's an octave above where it was originally written, but I keep everything else the same, and it's still going to convey the same bit of melody. If I play the original version, let's play these couple of measures right here. And then if I flip over to the other version, we'll hear uh, right here. Oops, let's play that again. So the flute had the upper octave in that second measure there. But all the other relationships stay the same. And the thing is, this doesn't only apply to melody. It can also apply to an accompaniment part. If I flip back to the uh, piano version here, in this measure, the 3-4 section, I have these inner voices. Right? All that inner motion. And this also, as long as I preserve what is on top of that motion, it's going to convey the same basic sound. So I can take that whole passage there, or just some of those notes there, take them up an octave, as long as I keep that F sharp on the top and keep the bass note, the A, on the bottom. So this is exactly what I have done in this passage. Now the flute has that F sharp, but up the octave, and uh, the bass note is still that A, uh, but we will see that I also double it an octave lower in the contrabass when I get to the G. And this is okay. We can have the outer voices an octave higher, an octave lower, as long as they are still the outer voices. It kind of won't matter so much what we do in between. So here, I didn't only take that F sharp and up an octave. Again, if we look at the original, we see there's a D and a B right around middle C. But here, I've taken those up an octave as well. And it's all going to work just fine. Let's hear that passage. <laughs> So my, uh, my point here is you can play with the octave of your lines pretty much uh, freely when you are orchestrating a piece as long as you try to keep in mind what the top voice was, what the bottom voice was, and make sure your top voice is still on top. Might be an octave higher than it was before, but make sure it's still on top. Make sure your bottom voice is still on the bottom. As long as you do that, you can kind of play around with the octaves of uh, what you do in between, and assuming that you're using good basic orchestration techniques, it's still going to sound like your original piece, just an orchestrated version of it.